Get ready to embark on an electrifying entrepreneurial journey. Join us as we dive into the minds of five extraordinary entrepreneurs who have scaled online businesses to awe-inspiring heights. Gary Green, Chris Miller, Lori Brown, Bobby Christie, and Terry Wilson are here to share their secrets of success. From visionaries to marketing mavens, these remarkable individuals will unveil their strategies, challenges, and pivotal moments that shaped their rise. The Big Five Podcast starts now. What is going on? Where were y'all last week? Nobody was. I showed up. Nobody was here. Oh, yeah. Oh, come <laughs> on now. I would have heard a message if that was the case. So, yeah. <laughs> we can't get it right, man. Can't you know, the week before we lost Bobby. Now we've lost Lori. But oh, Bobby. What? Lori's not here? Where's Lori I mean, at? Lori. I mean, baseball game. Lori, I mean, how many. How many passes do we give out for the show? I mean, apparently, <laughs> apparently, you can just come and go as you, you get want. one. You get we one. know one now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, next week I won't be here. Y'all have to take it. <laughs> Space is at a premium. <laughs> We're going to have to start renting squares here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Brady Brady Bunch format, right? Exactly. You know, exactly. There yeah. was a story right? <laughs> about a lovely entrepreneur. Well, we we need more than five, right? We we like nine, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. How many was in it? What what in there? How many were there? Uh, three and three. Yeah, three boys, three girls. Yeah, and two in and the middle. And then mom, dad, and what? Alice. And <laughs> <laughs> the housekeeper in the middle. The middle yeah. right? It's yeah. something weird about that housekeeper. I'm not going, but I'm just telling saying. You. I'm telling, telling you. you. Anyway, well, tonight we're talking about being intentional in your business and focusing on certain things and, and, and being intentional with what you're doing, not trying to do everything at once, but, you know, week by week, what do I need to work on this week? What am I doing? Uh, what do I want to see done by the end of next week? Because so many times in business and like in life, you try to do everything at one time, you end up doing nothing. So it, it really does take intentionality to get anything accomplished because otherwise you go into overwhelm mode because you see all the things that need to be done and then uh, it just doesn't seem to to happen. So tonight we want to talk about what we're doing in our business right now, what we're focused on. It could be mechanical, it could be mindset, it could be anything, but uh, that's what we're talking about. So I want to start with Gary. Gary, what are you working on right now? What are you being intentional about in your business? Technology, man. I'm wrapping my head around technology the best I can at where we're at in in, in the technology journey, right? You know, because that's a journey. That's a that's a big highway, right? Yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> but anyway, there's so much technology, but we unpack it to where you can comprehend it. You know, uh, you know, easier, right? I guess kind of the better way to put it. You know, there. But one thing that I'm working on is uh. You know, we have a workflow, which some people may be uh, familiar with workflow. Some people may not. But basically, it's a piece of technology that you can create to do automation for you. You can send out a text automatically, an email automatically, a video, a follow up, you know, a live lead transfer where, we, where, we, where a lead comes in. We can do a workflow where it's going to transfer the lead live immediately to the salesperson in the field or whatever that they're doing. So workflow is a very powerful tool that's be, uh, that's used uh, in, in this business. You know, definitely we do teach and train on how to do that. But to talk about what I'm doing just lately with it, which is uh, some cool stuff, you know, they say, what do they say? Every time you do a workflow, you say, what, an hour, two, three hours a week. And it is very true. That's true. Uh, you know, when I first heard that, I was like, before I even knew what a workflow was, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> well, well, what does that mean? And then all of a sudden, then I just did one. And then I go, oh, I can, hey, light bulb moment. You're like, yeah, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely all about saving time in your business. But what I've used just recently uh, with the workflow is like, if I have an appointment, you have an appointment, they're not there right? You know, that happens in business. That's going to happen in business. Okay. So you got to have a follow-up sequence to follow up with somebody that doesn't show up for whatever reason life gets in the way, or, you know, they're just, you know, the, the dog got out or just some kind of crazy stuff with the kids or, you know, just life, you know, essentially, but, but that no show workflow that I created does the follow-up. So the workflow I have it set up, it sends out a text, Hey, sorry, we missed you. Looks like you didn't make it. Uh, just want to follow up with you. 
you know, and see if you'd like to reschedule. And it's like a personal message, you know, like it, they, they think it, I just literally t- uh, typed it out, but it's already set up in this workflow. And then that's the first part of it. And then they get an email with a red alert on the top of the email. Hey, sorry, you missed the call today. All when I click this workflow button, right? Text, email. And then the next thing after that, then like three minutes later, I sit up on a live lead transfer. Then it calls them. Yeah. Okay. Right. So when I click this workflow, man, it's going through all the sequence. So then the live lead transfer, then it calls me. I know the call is coming through. So once I click the button, so then I answer it. If they didn't reply on the text or anything like that, then I'm trying to call them. So they're getting a text from me. They're getting an email from me. Three minutes later, they're getting a phone call from me where I'm not even dialing the number. I'm just picking up the phone. This workflow is doing everything for me. Okay. And then guess what? If they answer, which I realized today, which I was mentioning earlier, is cool technology, right? Technology is very vast, very in-depth. It's come a long way. They answer this workflow. A lot of people may not, you know, uh, understand this, but we have a stop on response feature. So if they reply anywhere in that process, text or they, I realize actually on the live call transfer, when I'm talking to the client, that stop on response kicks in. And so, you know, so if they didn't answer, the workflow is going to still go. I have it like throttled at a three day three days, they're going to get a text right there. So like if somebody missed an appointment, it could be for the insurance business, the real estate business, the travel business, HVAC, solar, or this platform here, TW3, they missed the appointment. You just set this no-show work uh, follow-up. You just click one button and it does all that for me. And it just saves time. You know, it saves time on each person that you uh, set that up for. But what I really loved about it today, I was using it, and actually, I was like, what happened to the workflow? It's gone. Oh, I said, oh, I enabled stop on response because that was the first time I actually saw it work with the live call transfer. Oh, that's so it registers that that lead was connected or replied. And then it takes them out, which is what I want. I wanted to remove it from that workflow. So uh, just, uh, you know, I just found that that's just uh, that's awesome. It's just less work. You know, for me, I can just click one button. It's going to do all of that. But we teach all that here, even though uh, the average person that comes in, they're not going to know everything that we're talking about here today or most of everything. But we're going to teach them step by step. We we show them how to do the first workflow. It's all built out. Terry has the whole system all built out on the workflow. We teach them how to do a little baby workflow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A little beginner workflow. So they can wrap their head around it and they can go and they can register in their head and they go, oh, yes, I know what a workflow is. It's going to save me time every every week, you know, and stuff like that. But that's the thing that I'd like to share that jumped out. I thought that was really cool. It's just uh, the technology. It always is showing me something that it can do that's really beneficial in business and uh, you know, I can't say enough about it. It's just, uh, you know, very, uh, you up to speed with technology, you know, where we're at here today. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the thing that you mentioned on that, that I really like, cause you guys know this, it's when you're working with a new salesperson and you're trying to get them up to speed and getting them trained on how to be an effective salesperson. One of the obstacles, not the first obstacle, but the first obstacle is just getting them to get in front of someone and speak, getting over the fact that they're going to have to talk to someone. But if you can get them past that, the next thing I have found in working with salespeople is getting them to do a follow up, follow up, follow up, because the average person has to be touched six or seven times before a buying decision is ever made, before they'll even think about it. And what Gary, you're doing, and Chris and Bobby, you guys are doing in your business is you're making good business practices accessible for the newbie because now the technology is because I always get the same point. I just don't want to be a pest. I don't, and they're so timid and so scared that someone is going to be rude to them or slam the door or hang up or why are you calling me or, you know, all this other stuff. Well now, but, but the fact of the matter is you have to be persistent. That's just the way it is. If it, and it doesn't mean that people are ignoring you. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're just busy. And it's just like, I'll get to it when I get it. Sometimes people are in a position they don't want to make a decision. And so the decision they make is don't make a decision. So we as the professional salespeople have to keep going and keep going because you don't know. Eventually you're going to hit them at the right time. It's the right moment. 
And if they do say go away, they're telling a piece of machinery to go away. Right, right. You're not and then t- also, Terry, just to add this, you know what? You're not going to have the motivation to follow up like what I was commenting on. Because you know what? You're going to have motivation one day. Yeah. The next, you're not going to have motivation. Because you're gone. human. It's yeah. Gone. Yeah. It's, it's just you got to. The technology is going to be there for you consistently. So On I just want to put that every in there. time with the right same attitude. It's 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 a machine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't watch the news and get all you know in its head over politics or there's their team lost and so now you know whatever could affect your attitude machine doesn't. it doesn't take off on the weekend it don't take okay. off on the weekend it don't take off for the holidays it right come it's, in it's, 24/7. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's there every time on time so i love that and the more you can work with us and our coaches and you guys the more people can work what we i think what we do probably better than a lot of other people because you can buy this technology anywhere but one of the things we do is we teach them how to humanize this technology we teach them how to be conversational we teach them don't spam people but be persistently kind and giving value to people and doing it in a way that's uh a little bit folksy a little bit conversational you know uh in a way that uh, doesn't come across like some sort of phone bank in some you know bum whatever egypt that uh, you know it's just t- it's so robotic it's not relational we teach them how to be relational with these machines which i, I like bobby i love that when you add that on there. that's awesome because it's a uh, hey when it sounds authentic because you know you get those text messages it's a pitch it's a sales canned pr- you know you know it's yeah. coming from the company that's but right. when you humanize that message like you just said terry and you know what? It's once you get it right, it's like because you got to find that message, just yeah. like you. Hey, how would I send this message to this person right now? Yeah. And you go like you're like you're texting your your uh, a family member, a friend, a business associate, right? And then put that into the workload. Yeah. Right. And then that that's um, well, yeah, I think just, that's the magic of our coaching is we teach people how to use machines in a human way. Yeah, and I think I mean how how many people hate. That when somebody contacts you on LinkedIn, they go, hey, you know, I was looking for uh, some good business leaders in my area and and your name popped up. Would you like to connect? And you look them over and you're like, okay, well, they look like, you know, the right kind of business that I'd like to connect up with. So you connect. The very first message is a sales pitch. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, get it. Get to know me a little bit. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I can, yeah, take me out on a date first. I mean, come on, we right? got you know. Let's go out and like you know socialize a little bit, right? <laughs> I have got a form letter. I've already got teed up to respond to every connection on LinkedIn that sends me an automatic pitch as soon as we connect. All right, share, share. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, save you time. It's annoying. Time. I just, I hate that nonsense. Yeah. It's like you know, like you were saying, that human touch is important. Right. And when people try to take it all out, I mean, that's why all of these rules and regulations that are always changing that make our lives more difficult every day. It's because of these morons that try to take that out. They want to do everything on autopilot. You know what I mean? And I'm a a big proponent of autopilot. You guys know that. Right. I'm a big proponent of that. I don't want to do anything (laughs) that I don't have to do. Right. If it can be done, you know, electronically, let it be done electronically. But that being said, people know they can get a hold of me. Yeah. Chris Miller, you know, they pick up the phone and they dial it. Chris Miller answers it, you know? Yeah. And that's just not something that the majority of the world seems to want to do anymore. You can automate giving people data. I don't know if you can automate building relationships well. You can so. build a brand and you can say, okay, he sounds like someone that would be interesting, but I don't know of too many people that I'd want to do business with that's going to let go of a high ticket price that we charge for some of our higher end coaching until they speak with us. And rightfully yeah. so, because I want to, I want it to be built on a good relationship, a good professional relationship of mutual respect. I'm going to respect you and your time. And I promise I'm going to convey information in a way that is a value to you. Yeah, yeah. At the same time, you're going to respect me and my time and what I do. And if we can mutually come together, but that, that can't be automated. 
that my yeah. brand can. And I can't tell you how many times I've picked up clients because they've been listening to the podcast forever. They've been on my newsletter forever. That just get all that does is give me the opportunity to have a conversation as to whether we're mm-hmm. a fit or not. Well, Terry, what you just said, relationships, you know, that's the key word um, there. I mean, if you can build a relationship, a back and forth, I mean, then you're going to get your message out better, you yeah. know, that way. So uh, you don't have to be best BFFs, right? No. But, you know, uh, make sure you're, you just have, a, you know, uh, take a moment just to kind of, you know, uh, be present uh, and then go into the, you know, what you have to say. So, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Bobby. I'm still here. <laughs> so what are you uh, intentional about in your business right now? What are you thinking about? What are you working on? Is it mechanics? Is it mindset? Is it a combination of both? Share with the people a little bit about where you're at right now in your business. The, I had an interesting experience when I was in North Carolina. I was there. They had a terrific storm. I mean, one of those believe, you know, unbelievable storms that, you know, kind of lifts the house off the ground. Wow. And <laughs> all of a sudden, I had no phone. I had no internet. And then I found out something that my phone actually did when it came back on. It said SOS only. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know that that existed. <laughs> yeah. So it basically turned my phone into a walkie talkie with like a 911 operator. <laughs> and the thing that I, it took for me was, okay, you know, all of this technology is great, but you know, if you're walking around with a plug in a dark house, <laughs> nothing's going to happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so I had to, you know, go find a hotspot and I got on the phone with my uh, phone provider and Actually, thankfully, my wife was able to talk with the people at the phone place since I couldn't. And so, you know, she got me, you know, like this, you know, a hotspot, an international hotspot. So now I'm I'm like a walking Internet hotspot wherever I go. <laughs> so I'll, I'll never get clipped by that. But what it did was in, in the several days that I was down, I started thinking about uh again, you know, more on the legacy end of this and got, you know, basically was stranded in a house with my two grandsons. And, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, you look out the backyard and it's filling up with water and you just think, hey, we'll we'll be out there a little bit throwing a ball. Don't worry. Uh, Which it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. But the thing I, I started really working with the boys on was everything counts. And that it's really being intentional but when you sit down you say okay well everything counts and gary had just mentioned it when he talked about relationships you know i came up on the investment side and whenever i would go to visit a client in the carolinas there's a rule of thumb that if you're in the living room you you're not family you're a guest that's right zero credibility you have been in the carolinas (laughs) you know our ways (laughs) and the thing is is that you have to work your way to the kitchen that's right that's where family hangs out (laughs) and if you can get to the kitchen table with with a pitcher of sweet tea yeah you're in (laughs) you're selling whatever you got in your briefcase (laughs) (laughs) and you don't even have to take it out of your briefcase yeah (laughs) because if you can get to there you can kind, you know, after all the chit chat, you know, they're gonna say, Well, we like you, we trust you, just do what's right. Yeah. And those are the easiest sales in the world, but those have to be face to face and they have to be, you know, conversations. You know, we can't automate ourselves completely into oblivion. Uh there are days that I would like to, but you know, the real relationship is going to be cemented right there. And also, when I was in North Carolina, I took the boys to a baseball showcase down in Wake Forest, North Carolina, which is east of Raleigh. And so we did the showcase out in the sun all day long. And one of them had the best triad, best showcase ever. 
I mean, hit everything, you know, all five tools right on the button. And the other one, man, <laughs> his best effort came at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I'm surprised he could pick up a hamburger or a chicken nugget because ah! on a baseball field, he couldn't do anything. <laughs> and so it, it, between it, his again, legs. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's just one of those things where if I'd have thrown him a French fry, he'd have missed. It. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that I was able to take away after pulling him aside to talk to him was, you know, it's like, hey, dude, everything counts. You know, your approach to this week was you thought you had it licked and you didn't have to put that extra time in like your brother did. And, you know, you went down there and really stunk it up. You know, luckily, you know, we're going to go back in November and redo it again. So your baseline is going to be a little bit lower and a little bit straighter than most. And so you have to start today getting better. And the question you have to ask yourself at the, at the end of every day is what did I do to get better today? And if you can't answer that question, you need to keep working. And it's the same in our business. It, it's like everything counts. Yep. You know, if you send a sloppy email, well, you know, that person on the on the receiving end of that sloppy email is going to say, what is this guy, an idiot? Yeah. yeah exactly. And, you know, you can't uh, you can't bring it back. No. And there's only so one first I'm impression, really, right? <laughs> <laughs> you never get to the kitchen with yeah. a bad first impression. Yeah. And. So the thing I was trying to relate to the boys was everything counts. And that dovetailed then into my RMP business because I'm actually setting up some RMPs that they're going to work on. Nice. In product areas, the ones already picked out gaming. Nice. And so we're, we're going to do some gaming RMPs to help earn him some extra money. And I'm going to teach him how to build the funnel the whole nine yards. And the other one is, is going to learn the more general aspect of not only funnel building, but the idea of RMP that, look, if I get stuck in Eastern North Carolina again, and I've got these RMP programs working, I'm making money without having to worry about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it really hit home. Yeah. And so... I'm right now in the process of setting up about 20 different ones. And I used AI to find the trending yeah. uh, words, you know, the mo uh, using uh, chat four, chat yeah. GPT four to get the, uh, the trending topics, trending keywords yeah. and building mini sites. Basically it's going to go add, bridge page then to the sales page of the rmp and each one's going to have its own separate url so that it can all be you know crossed yeah and i'm going to pump it with articles and you know really just kind of play and connect the dots and we'll see how it goes the uh the gold and silver one that i'm doing is really getting some traction nice. and the other one is on trading and it's digging in pretty good right now as well. And I, I'm working on a weight loss breakthrough thing for because some of the best offers on ClickBank are obviously in the health and fitness area. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm, I'm using what I know about funnels to, you know, to okay, we're going to go Facebook ad, we're going to go to the bridge page, then to the landing page, then to the sales page. Now, I, I've got a ketogenics one that I use and I'll post some things I'm doing in the gym and stuff like that and a little blog articles and it goes right into something like that. So that's great. What you were telling your, your children about everything counts. Uh, I've had similar conversations and you've probably heard this saying before. Tell me if you have or haven't, but there was a saying that I heard Bill Perry years ago at our conference say, Perry. and if y'all remember him, and he says, how you do anything is how you do everything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How you do anything is how. And so I was talking to my kids and I was like, if you don't take care of your car, if you don't keep it clean, 
then that tells people, maybe a potential employer or a potential client later on, he don't take care of it. He's sloppy. So any work he's going to do for me is sloppy. Because where the people are cognitive of that, in the back of their mind, subconsciously, that we're being measured all the time. You see someone that's put together, that shows up on time, that's clean car, clean. What do you think? This person takes care of stuff. They got, you know what I'm saying? It's just a subconscious thing that happens. And so in business especially, but for my kids, it's like the best, the two things you can always do is show up on time, show up with a great attitude, and keep your stuff clean. If you'll just do that, you could be the most incompetent person there and you're already ahead. You know, you could be a D student. I'll take a D student that's on time, good attitude, and teachable over that A student that's sloppy, don't show up, you know, because they don't <laughs> produce much. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Well, I've heard another way to uh, put it is like, you don't stay the same every day. You either get better or you get worse. That's exactly so which right. one was it at the end of the day? Which, which one was it? You know which one it is if you ask yourself, right? Which direction you to make did you sure go? you're getting better, right? That's right. <laughs> And I know that sounds like because it's an old dad, you're just an old fuddy daddy. I know it's old school, but it's just it still works today. <laughs> it still I was going to say the same thing with my dad. I said my dad used to tell me that if you don't learn something new every day, you shouldn't get out of bed. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> exactly. Of course, he did spend a lot of time in bed, so maybe he was just making that up. But I, you know, it's still good. <laughs> you're going to get out what you put in. That's absolutely, absolutely. exactly. You know, in in that topic that we're not supposed to talk about the uh you know in in looking at it because both of my grandsons have, are already starting to get looked at by colleges yeah and like gary's son is probably being looked at by schools as well you know when the scouts show up they're not looking to see how good you are playing baseball because they already know you can play baseball you know what they're looking for is okay is this guy going to fit in in my culture. Yes. And, you know, does he show up, got a hat on the right way? Yeah. Not sideways or backwards. You know, is he, is he wearing jewelry that he's not supposed to wear? And, you know, is, is he dressed, you know, shirt tucked in, belt buckled, pants right the correct way? You know, what's it, what are his baseball shoes look like? Is he clanging the mud off from two days ago or, or are they somewhat buffed up? You know, a little bit clean. How does he keep his stuff? You know, that's the stuff they're looking at. Yep. And, you know, I feel bad for a lot of these kids that are playing for TikTok moments. Uh, I went to the perfect game stuff that they held down here in Georgia to watch some of the 14 and 15 year olds play. And I was shocked by their behavior. And I mean, there were scouts just shaking their head and crossing names off the list because they would hit a home run or do something and they, they would be making fun of people running the bases and they would do nothing but showboat. And, you know, it's that stuff that everything counts. And, you know, people are always looking, especially in today's world where everywhere you turn, somebody is looking at to see how you're doing. Yep. yep. And they're either going to jump on your case or pat you, pat you on the back and, a lot of the people out there are really looking for you to fail. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's it's that intentional stuff that w we need to be teaching the kids of today that it's like, look, you know, you can showboat on a baseball field once, but you're never going to do it again. That's right. And because, you know, you might lose a scholarship offer to a school that you want to go to just because you're a moron. You know, flipping your bat and, you know, giving it the old DX and, right. you know, and, you know, trying to show people up. Uh, it's and, true. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like looking back and thinking, you know, can you see somebody trying to show up Bob Gibson? Uh, I mean, he'd stick one in your ear. Yeah, you'd be wearing and, a bat. <laughs> and there was a great quote by Mickey Mantle. Uh, the, the reason he ran the bases after a home run with his head down is that he didn't want the focus to be on him yep. and that he just wanted to get back in the dugout as soon as possible to not show up anybody on the other team. Because when he played back in the day, well, if he had shown somebody up, somebody had thrown at him. 
Yeah, someone's going to get a concussion right afterwards. <laughs> or, the, or the catcher's going to flatten you when you touch the plate. That's exactly right. Well, uh, you know this probably, but for those who are listening, there is a reason to this day, if you watch the North Carolina Tar Heels play basketball, when someone does something well, like they get a dunk or they, they make a shot, what does that player immediately do? They point to the person that threw them the pass. And that was something instilled by Dean Smith because when television started coming in to televising the games, the TV camera would immediately go on to the person who made that shot or whatever. And he wanted that player and he wanted it in his culture to say, it wasn't just me that made that point. If I didn't get the ball from this person over here, I would have never said that's a, this is like a thing. And I think other teams have picked that up, but that started in North Carolina with Dean Smith pointing to the person that uh, gave the pass. But uh, you're right, Bobby. Everything counts. Uh, attitude makes up for 99% of everything, the way you carry yourself. Um, I had a kid, I, I say kid, 27-year-old young man that was podcasting about sports of all things, football. He was wanting to start this football podcast and asked me would I coach him and teach him how to set up a podcast. Local guy. So I said, sure. He came in, and the first thing he started doing was, well, does it require this, and do you need a microphone? I said, because what they had been doing is just using Skype and uh, or Zoom and just talking, and, and that's what they did. I said, listen, anybody and everybody can do that, and you can do that. I'm not telling you, but I said, if you want to be taken serious, you're going to have to sound serious. I said, podcast is an audio format first and foremost, and then if, if you can add video, great. And uh, But it was just like, there was a little bit of this attitude like, well, does it take all that? I just want to get do the least I can do to get by. I said, well, you can get by with taking your cell phone out, laying it on the thing and just talking. I said, but I want people that's got five to 10 grand to spend with me on coaching. And so I have just learned that client, if they see me just talking like that and sounding like a, you know, I'm a dinosaur flatulating in a bucket when I talk, it don't, it don't, it don't convey quality. It doesn't convey high end. But when I, because he was sort of poking at me, he said, you just sound like you're on NPR. <laughs> I was like, well, if they let rednecks on NPR, I guess this is what they'd sound like. But, <laughs> but I put money in our audio equipment and all this other stuff because I want to convey, this is my medium of communication and I do everything in excellence. I, my medium is not writing. And I, I don't spell correctly, all that but this is what I do. And so to what I do and want to do, I want to convey, you can trust the quality in it. And, and if you see that and hear that and it's of quality, then maybe uh, I do other things in quality that you'd find value in as well. And you're going to attract the right uh, clients. But I, to get the, to me, to get the client I want, there's no shortcuts to it. There's no just, you know, let's just do what we can do to get by with. The, the client that appreciates what we do is a client that appreciates excellence. And so we have to walk in excellence. Yeah. And keeping with that theme that that you and Bobby are both saying, and Gary even, all, all three of you, I think a lot of the younger generation today doesn't understand the purpose of how to get through a job interview. Right. They think that it's all about them for some reason. Right. And, and if, if you guys are listening to this and you're, you know, you're, you're thinking I got to get that new job because I'm going to make it all about me. You're not going to get that job. It's not about you. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's about me. If you're high, if you're in me, in my company, I'm going to ask two questions to myself about you. I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions, first of all, right? And based on your answers, I'm going to answer the two questions that I'm trying to answer. The first one is, are you going to enhance or embarrass my business? Yes. Okay. And then the second question is, are you going to make or cost me money? Those are the only two questions I care about. Yep. And if I get those good answers, I'm going to give you a job. Yep. If I don't get those good answers, I'm not going to give you a job. I'm going to tell you, well, you did great. Good luck to you. We'll call you. Some <laughs> stupid nonsense like that. I'm not going to do that, but that's what people do. I'm just going to tell you, you ain't right for this. See you later. But I'm a blunt guy. Not everybody's like me. A lot of them are afraid of conflict. 
right? Even managers today. But you got to understand, a manager, even if he's not in charge of that business, his job, his job description as a manager is to pay you the least amount of money he can for the most amount of work he can get out of you. And there's nothing okay. wrong with that either. Right. That's the way the game and is played. That's the world. That's the world. Right? So as this young person coming out of college or coming out of high school and thinking, my mommy and daddy told me that I can do anything in the world that I want. So I'm going to make it all about me. You're not, you are not going to get where you want to go because it's never about you. That's exactly it's about right. what you can do to help somebody else. And when we're selling things, when we're building our business, it's about what we can do to help our clients. It's always about what we can do to help somebody else at every level. Would you guys agree? I oh, totally yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. At every single level. So I, I'm i just, I'm throwing that out there because you guys are bringing it out of my, it's a, it's a pet peeve of mine. Well, it's, I think it's people have the, been talking to me lately and I've been having this issue. You're with probably like, about you. living in the same culture we're living in. And I've got kids that are in college right now and they are being inundated with all kinds of philosophies and I want everybody to do what they want to do. You do you boo. And you, and you <laughs> vote for who you want and you, you subscribe. But here's the only question I would ask you and I'm not going to get, does this philosophy serve my interest? Does it, does it make me better, a better person? And what does history say about this philosophical idea? For instance, if I wake up in the morning thinking someone owes me something, I've already started on the wrong foot because no one owes me anything. And even if they did, it doesn't serve my interest to have that attitude. Because what I have done psychologically is I've put my welfare in the hands of someone else. Exactly. Saying, oh gosh, I hope they're benevolent. toward I, Oh gosh, I hope they remember that they owe me. But if I wake up with the attitude, I'm going to get what I'm worth, and it's up to me to make sure it happens, and I put the responsibility on Terry Wilson, then at the end of the day, I can live with myself. And I've, I've just figured out over time, like you guys have, that's why we're here as entrepreneurs, nobody cares about us more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> so why would I outsource my destiny, my career, my ability to do it? So I'm with you guys, you know, as I'm talking to my kids, that's like, listen, if you don't like the way I perceive the world, my worldview, that's fine. But is your philosophy making you a better person? What has history taught us that when we outsource to big government, big business or big anything else, no one helps. It's human nature. Human nature is to do what's right for me. That means that business is going to do what's right for them. That means that big government is going to do what's right for them. So yeah. the only way I can get what I'm worth out of this life is go out there and get it myself. Yeah. And you, there's no shortcuts. No, there's no shortcuts, folks. You know, my kid, I'm teaching him parts of my business right now and I've got him doing blogging, right? He's, he's annoyed with me because I make him do the same blog over like six times until he gets it right. I was like, well, did you add those uh, internal links as well as the external links? Well, I put some external links. Well, you better go back and link them to the other pages. Right? <laughs> and then I'm like, let's go, man. You know? <laughs> well, that's the thing. This attitude of just do what you can do to get by. It just... That's why I love what, you know, I love what we do because at the end of the day, I don't make what I make because of my age, my race, my ethnicity, my orientation, my worldview. I make what I make based on the value I can bring to other people, period. Yes. You know, there is no politics in this office right here. It's just me. <laughs> what and can we do for others? That's the only thing that drives that's anything. All that matters. And because of that, what it's doing is it's forcing me to become better. I have to, I have to be a better version of myself tomorrow. If I just want to break even, let alone get ahead, you know, because the world is rapidly changing and business is changing. The landscape is changing. You know, I was talking to someone 
uh, just yesterday, you know, in the 90s with NAFTA and the advent of robotics, it's, it's hurt the blue-collar worker tremendously. But guess what, folks? The white-collar worker is starting to get pinched. Why? Because of AI. So all of my creative guys out there that uh, were able to get jobs because of their ability to write and to blog and to, to graphic and all that, AI yep. is more and more and more and more. So that 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 sector of our workforce is going to start filling it in the next 10 years, just like NAFTA did in the 90s and up until today. So what does that mean? That doesn't mean to worry or get upset. That means to you need to find a niche that you can bring value to a group of people. Where is a problem that is in your area, your your world, and then solve that problem. Solve it for yourself and then solve it for other people, and boom, there's your business. It's just yep. as simple as that. And I like what you quoted earlier, too, from Bill. Like, what you say? How you do anything. How you do anything. How you do everything. It's how you right? do everything. If I get in the habit of being sloppy, I'm going to be sloppy everywhere. But if excellence is my habit, if I've got this mindset when Terry Wilson's name's on it, it's done right. If I keep that attitude, then that means even the things I'm weaker in, if I can't do it well, I'm going to find someone who can because it's my name. It's my brand. And once you get that habit, it will sustain itself, right? Because once it becomes a habit, then your subconscious mind yep. makes you repeat it mm -hmm. yep. on its own. It just makes you repeat it. And if you deviate from it, it'll correct you to get back on it. Yeah. And what would they say? Like what? 21 days to create a habit? Well, it like, takes that long. I to think it's 27, new neuron, but 27 yeah. 27 to create all the new neurons and stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or close, close to it, you know? So, yeah. yeah, but your brain works on pattern recognition. Everything you do works on pattern recognition. It's why your heart keeps beating every day because yeah. it's got a habit of doing it. Yeah. Well, you know what? Those good habits are good. The bad habits are bad. If you can just take a habit, because all, we all got those habits every day, you start kind of remove some of those bad habits, right? Right. One at a time and try to, you know, adjust your, uh, your skill set, your energy, you know, what you're doing just to be better, you know, because every, we all know what our bad habits are, like, you know, a lot of them, right? We can pick them out. But if you're able to replace one of those, just think about replacing it. You know, that's a that's a good thing to kind of be working on, you know, there. So, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I read yeah, this. You got to do that consciously, though. That's yeah. tough. I read this at church the other week. It says, I am your constant companion. I'm your uh, greatest helper. Or your heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I'm completely at your command. Half of the things you do, you might as well just turn over to me and I'll do them quickly and correctly for you. I am easily managed. You must be firm with me. Show me exactly how you want something done. And after a few lessons, I will do it automatically. I am the servant of great people. And at last, I'm the failure of others as well. Those who are great, I have made great. Those who are failures, I have made fail. I am not a machine, though I work with the precision of a machine, plus the intelligence of a person. You may run me for profit or run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. I make, take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will, play, uh, I will place the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I will destroy you. Who am I? I am your habits. I was like, nice, nice. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> good one, good one. I, that's that. Yeah. It's called the habit poem. I read that uh, a couple Sundays ago, but it's true. What man? That is, that is. Hey, just write down all your habits. <laughs> write them down. Right. Yeah. You go. This one's good. This one's good. This one's not right. This one's not right. <laughs> exactly right. Well, I could. I tell everyone, I, it wasn't no pill, through lotion, or potion that took 120 pounds off of me. It wasn't anything, no special program. It was simply this, just for making myself for about a month or two, go to the gym every day. Just go. I don't care. Just go. For an hour, I'm going to go. And I had to, it was the hardest thing in the world to get in that habit. But now, it's yeah. like today I woke up, had a long oh, weekend, had a ton of stuff at church. Didn't necessarily want to do it. But I mean, I just found the whole time I'm getting my gym bag together. It's that, and a matter of fact, I'm texting you guys on the way to the gym, yeah. and then and then boom, all of a sudden I'm there and I'm working out, and it's like yeah. I didn't even want to do this. Why am I do it? It's a habit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, I mean it's hard, right? Because 
your subconscious mind is the mother of all influencers, right? It doesn't yell at you. It doesn't scream at you. Hey, man, you're doing the wrong thing. It just whispers in the back of your mind like, hey, that's not what you want to do. Don't you want that uh, that cupcake, you know, or whatever, <laughs> right? You don't want to be out here busting your ass on this treadmill right now. Wouldn't you rather go and grab an iced tea? Yeah. You know, and it's just little things like that that just seep in and gradually bring you back to your norm. So it's very important to consciously stay focused until you overcome that habit. You know, you have to. And there's some psychology and things I learned along the way. I mean, you guys probably knew this. I didn't. But did you know, typically, especially if someone that is not used to working out, we're talking about someone who's not used to physical exercise exertion the first 20 minutes of any workout your body is in fight or flight mode and screaming at you get off you're in pain your shortness of breath you're getting all these signals to your brain that's saying stop 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 and once you put and then as you get into shape that shortens from 20 minutes to 15 to 10 to 8 to 5 it starts shortening but your first few moments of working out is always stop hey, hey what are we doing because you're overcoming that inertia, you know, that, that sedentary, you know, state that you're in and putting it in a different motion. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Well, I had a similar, what you just said, Terry, also earlier. Yeah. You had a long weekend and you went this morning, that same thing here. I had a long weekend, got in late last night. I have an eight o'clock appointment with the trainer and stuff. And I'm just like, Oh, I was like five minutes late, but I was like, so what I'm still going, but I was talking myself out of it. I was talking myself in it. And it was like, a, you know, on like, you know, I'm like, should I go? Oh, no. And then I said, hey, just get your, you know what, in there yeah. quick. It, get in there. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, all right, I'm doing it right. So I, then I like, you know, the next thing you know, I got in there. Yeah, I felt 100% like better for, you know, uh, I, I that habit. I did it, yep. you know. So it's a it's a definitely a, a built, you know, a stepping block in the day, you know, for sure. You have to get in that, that situation where anything you do that you want to do, make it a decision rather than a choice. Cause that's what me and my wife talk about all the time. I says, choice fatigue is dependent upon willpower. So every day I'm choosing, am I going to eat this or am I going to eat this? What are we, but if I make a decision, Hey, on Sunday after church, we go to the grocery store, we're buying these groceries. We meal prep because we have decided this is what we're going to eat this week. That's a decision. <laughs> <laughs> a choice is day by day. Well, what do you want to know? I don't know. Well, you know what? I'm sort of in the mood for some ice cream. Let's just go on up to the Dairy Queen and get some, you know what I'm saying? Well, then it's based on, oh, yeah, really, I'm trying to eat better. And then I'm just, it's that warfare because now I'm having to, to fight willpower and all that. But if I made a decision on the front end and I took activity, I made, I made movement, activity, buying decisions because I put myself in a situation that I have to eat this now because we've already prepped for it, man, it's going to go bad. You know, you have to put yourself in a, a situation that this is what we're going to do this week. That's a decision. You know, it's that whole yeah. Latin word decision. When you make from. the decision, you're there. You're, well, a decision you're, means cut away all your options. It comes, it's, it, it's actually from It a, drives me just as nuts, man. I do the same thing. We, The wife and I, we go to the grocery shop and, and we make the decision. We're not bringing anything home. That's not decent food for us, right? Clean eating, yep. Right? But then later on, I'm standing there for five minutes with the fridge door open going, <laughs> oh, there's nothing here I want. <laughs> Where's the butter pecan? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't we go to the grocery store and there's no food? You know? <laughs> That's true. The uh... fridge full of nothing. This is no fun, okay? <laughs> My wife and I do the same thing. I make out the menus. We kind of like do the menu ahead of time. And then she goes to the store because we have learned that if I go to the store with her, it, it's like, it, 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 it's, it's got a bad ending. <laughs> it don't and, end well. <laughs> so, and, you know, I, I just grab stuff and, you know, she knows how much the cost is and she knows where you buy one, get one. And, the uh i mean she's a profet well she's an accounting person so you know it's uh and the other thing that it's done is that it saved us a bundle of money because before we did this it was like well what do you want to have for dinner tonight no let's go out 
Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's kind of like ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you know, the food budget ends up with a comma in it. Yeah. And, you know, by just doing it sensible and doing it ahead of time with that meal prep, like for the entire week, I know what to make for dinner every night because I'm the one that cooks. So that when she walks in the house at quarter to six, I can say to her, okay, menu says this is what we're having. Bing, bang, bang. Be ready at 630. Yep. She'll change your clothes, watch your soap. And as it's winding up, dinner's served. <laughs> Absolutely. But isn't it true though, you, you have to be intentional and you premeditative on what you're going to do. Uh, and not put yourself in a situation where you're going to uh, choose one way or the other day by day. And the way I relate that to the business, and you guys will appreciate this story, several years ago I had someone at church come up to me and say, Terry, I'd love to do what you guys are doing. I see what you're doing with your business, and I'd like to become a member. And um, I was getting the sense that they were wanting me to just give them a package. You know, that they weren't coming out and asking, but I was getting the sense. And so I told him, I says, listen, I will give you my system. I really will. But I won't coach you. I won't help you. You have to do it yourself. But all the training's there, okay? I'll give it to you. Or you can buy my system, and you'll get a coach, someone that'll help you. And he says, well, I'll do whichever you want. What, what do you think I should do? I said, honestly, I think you should spend the money. And they said, why? I says, because I've learned something after doing this for at that time, it'd been like 12 years, 11 years. I said, people that pay, pay attention. People that yep. don't pay, then, you know, oh, putting a funnel together is hard. I'm going to do something else. But if you put yourself in a situation, because back then it was like $2,500. Oh, my gosh, I just gave Terry $2,500. I at least want my money back. That pressure of learning this and getting and staying involved will be just enough accountability to where you won't just because you're not going to walk away from twenty five hundred dollars so easily, but you'll walk away from well, I tried it. It was hard. I didn't want to do it. And they said, oh, OK. And that person actually showed up at the it was the guy that was on Dirty Dancing, by the way, guys, that was at. The oh, OK, yeah, it was one of those guys. Uh, and 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 he thanked me later. He goes, thank you for taking my money, because I know because that that did not come easy to me putting step four together because we always had step four which is where we're teaching how to put a funnel together. And back then it was just with WordPress stuff. And uh, he said, I would have walked away in week one and wouldn't have made any money and would not have the skills that I have today and understand digital marketing now. So uh, the moral of the story is put yourself in a situation where you have to do what you decided to do rather than saying, hey, I think I want to do this, but I'll choose day by day if I continue to do it. Yeah, well, I can second that. I mean, I I didn't spend twenty five hundred dollars. I spent seven hundred bucks or something like that to Gary, and I was not going to walk away from that money. Yeah, right? I'm like, I'm getting that back. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to learn this and get my money back. Exactly. I'm not stopping until I get it back. But uh, you know, you don't do your clients favors and you don't do yourself favors if you don't make decisions, and that means invest. Put yourself yeah, in a situation yeah. where I've got yeah, to, yeah. I got to perform. Yeah. The decisions like, uh, that's a big word, you know, decisions, because you got to make decisions to change, to move forward. Yeah. You know, if you're not making decisions, you're just going to be doing status quo. You're going to be where you're at. I mean, su successful people reach their decisions quickly, Yep. but they change them slowly. Yep. Unsuccessful people make decisions slowly but then change them quickly. Right. So, uh, That's true, man. you know, the decisions is, uh, you know, and then also, you know what, you don't wait for it to be perfect either. Uh, a lot of times with decisions, right. If you feel like this, cause it's going to be beneficial, go for it. You're not going to be in a perfect world where this decision's going to have all the lights to turn green before you go to town. And, and we're going to build a yellow brick road for you specifically for you for this decision. It's not going to happen. Yep. Okay. But if it feels right. Make, hey, it, it, you, you make the decision, right? Yep. You made the decision, but it's mostly right. But there's some stuff like, oh, okay. I'll, well, I didn't like this, but you learned from that. Yep. How are you yep. going to move forward if you didn't make that decision? Absolutely. You know, there. Okay. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a level of commitment, right? Because, People that, that they're quick to 
um, jump to the decision. They're going to just stop thinking about it. They're just going to do it. Yep. But then they're going to get committed behind that and they're going to throw their laser focus at it. Right. They get that tunnel vision toward it. Yep. But those that waffle around it and finally decide to do it, those are the ones you got to worry about because chances are they didn't have any conviction behind their decision anyway. Yep. Right. And so then they're going to start going, well, you know, it turns out this wasn't what I thought. That's not my fault. You know, if it's not what you thought, maybe you should have thought better Yeah. because, you know, you need to focus on your decision process. It's like, I don't care who you are. I don't care what the decision is. It's like I yeah. told a guy that was full of minority one time. I says, I can't tell you what you were thinking. I can just tell you what I said. And this is what yeah. I said. <laughs> who yeah, knows how what you, you were thinking? That, it's on you. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, well, I well, didn't think like this. Did. I didn't think that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah, they, they took a long time to make that decision. And they knew it was they were going to make it. Yeah. They took a long time to do it. But guess what? They make the de- decision to throw the towel in quickly. Right. Yeah. They, they, they don't take a long time together. to throw in the towel. When they make, they go, they think about that for not long and they just go and they go with it quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, Eisenhower said, in preparing for battle, I have always found plans are useless, <laughs> but planning is indispensable. Exactly. I love that. Good, good, good <laughs> quote. Definitely for sure. Yeah. Quote. Yeah. For sure. And we're dropping some bombs here, man. Woo! This is just like, we got them coming from everywhere. I Carpet mean, you know, bombing. Five, really. <laughs> well, the, I, we're not called the small five, you know, uh, we're not I mean, called hey. the small five. That's right. Well, I tell you what, you get, uh, you get Lori on vacation and we can get something done. I, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we miss you, Lori. We do miss her. And, uh, thank God we didn't have to spell anything tonight. Otherwise, uh, we'd be in trouble without misspelling V. I know she left us hanging. We're the, we're the big four, the big right. four. Right. Right. The f- we're back to the final four, you know, oh, Bobby last, four. last week he was bar hopping. I hear he was at one bar and I heard he was trying to get to two bars is what, uh, Lori said. That was, that's why she said you weren't here. I don't know if you le- heard the podcast, uh, the, you weren't on Bobby, but, uh, Lori said you were at one bar. And so yeah. we had fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> when people hear that. They're like, wait, what? What is he? Where? He, he's at a bar? I really? think he was like, talking about weird a for a guy that doesn't drink, you know? <laughs> yeah. <I> know. <laughs> That's what makes it funny. <laughs> Tell that to your phone. <laughs> yes. And it was apparently out having a great time. He was out having a good time. You know, at one bar. Bars all the time. He's stumbling and trying to get two bars. <laughs> Well, when you come and listen to the Big Five, I'm telling you, we're going to mess around and tell you some good information at some point. We're just going to stumble across it. It, 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 It's inevitable. It it will probably happen, right? We'll we'll stumble over a good idea every once in a while. That is for sure. That is for sure. Well, any last thoughts? Last thoughts, guys, before we wrap it up tonight. Hey, I was happy to have that one bar. I mean, I was out on the front porch, like, leaning you know how you, you move the phone all over the place to get it to the point where I could get to a bar <laughs> up on one and, foot uh, with a seven iron. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's kind of like we really need to think about what's going to happen when some of the cell towers do fall down <laughs> because you get that SOS only. And it's like, really? Yeah, for real. Need a contingency plan around here. Well, it's last thing that I would say is if you guys are listening to this podcast and you really like the the direction that it's going, you want to help us keep it going, spread the word. You know what I mean? Let your friends know we're out here because we have got we've got some value that we're putting it out. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And if there's oh, any, yeah. Oh, yeah. any way any of us can help you. Uh, connect with one of us and you can connect to anybody on the show over uh, at our website and in the links at this particular podcast that's in the, in the links of the show. Uh, so just connect with us. We would love, we love helping uh, people. That's what we're in the business for. Uh, and we've got solutions from, for every uh, type of business and every size of business. And uh, you're, you're working with folks that's been in business a long time doing different things. And, uh, and we got like 150 years of experience between us. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. If you want to learn technology and multiple streams of income and, you know, just, uh, you know, not have to 
learn it by yourself and go the long, lonely ro road and trying to do it by yourself, uh, you know, then yeah, come on in. We're happy to help you. We're, happy, uh, we're wrapped around making money and business and technology. So we unpack it in a way to where uh, it's, uh, you know, user friendly, you know, for the average person. So yeah, definitely come on, come on through and uh, we will, we're happy to help you for sure. So yeah. Absolutely. And it's a great community to be a part of because I know being a business owner and out there working from home sometimes can be a lonely spot and it's good to be around other people, other entrepreneurs that are in similar businesses or at least have similar problems that every business has. Every business needs more leads, more people to speak to better margins, uh, better efficiencies in how to process and better processes in their business. All of those things that's common, no matter what business you're in. And that's what our tools and our training does. And then you get in a community that you can connect with. And uh, it's just it's just a great place to be and can't uh, can't speak highly enough about it. But anywho, well, guys, great show. This has been episode four and we'll see you guys next time. Inspiring, informative, and informational. This is TTW3.